Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is my old custom gaming laptop. It features an i5 dual core CPU and GeForce 800 series graphics. Unfortunately, the GPU is failing and doing anything with the integrated graphics can be a less than ideal experience to say the least. Even general usage under Windows 10 isn't brilliant. I decided then to install a lighter operating system to make browsing the web or just watching some YouTube videos more pleasant. And my first thought was Linux. I then stumbled upon an ETA Prime video whereby he installed Android on an old PC and I thought, yeah. Maybe that would also be suited to this machine as well. So that's what I did. All it takes is one of these. There are of course a couple of programs you need to download too, the first of which is Rufus. This will create a bootable Android image on your USB stick for you in just a few clicks. I'll show you what to do a little later on. Before that, you'll also need to go to the Android x86 website and download a version of the Android operating system. You can either choose a 32-bit or 64-bit version, and you can also download older versions if you wish, but for my machine, I went for the latest 64-bit version, which is 9.0 R2 at the time of this video. Depending on your internet connection, this may take either a couple of seconds or a couple of years to download. Maybe that's just me. Now, once you have both Rufus and the latest Android ISO or ISO on your system, we need to create the bootable USB. This is a very simple process. First of all, plug your USB drive into your PC, then open Rufus from your desktop or your downloads or wherever you've saved it on your machine, and then get ready to install the ISO. At the top of the program, under device, you should see your USB drive listed. Mine's named Android because I called it that, but yours will very likely be different. Don't worry about formatting it first of all, because this program will take care of that. Next, click the select button and choose the Android ISO you just downloaded. You don't need to mess around with any of the other complicated looking options here. Remember, if you don't know what it does, don't touch it. After that, Click start, followed by yes if this dialog box pops up. Make sure the recommended mode here is also selected, then proceed with the OK button. This will remove everything on your USB drive, so bear that in mind. This will take a minute or two at the most, and once it's completed, you can close Rufus and gently remove your USB stick from your PC. Now we're going to install it on our suffering Windows 10 laptop. Again, this will remove everything if you go through with the method I'm using, so bear that in mind. Power on your machine and then hit the boot menu button. It will be one of the F buttons, most likely F1, F2, F3 or so on. This should be in your motherboard's manual if you have one, but searching for your PC or laptop's model online should tell you which one to press. I just tried them all because this is a custom laptop and eventually I found the right one. It was F11. From the boot options then you want to select your USB drive. This might be titled UEFI USB or UEFI followed by your USB drive's name like mine is. Ignore the top option labelled Android, that's just my primary hard drive. It says that because I've already got this installed but I'm about to reinstall it of course. After choosing your USB drive, you should get these options and from here you can either select the top live option to test it out before installing it, which is recommended, but I'll show you how to install it on your hard drive as you would, say, another OS. Remember, this will remove everything else. So head on down to advanced and then select auto install to specific hard disk. This lets us choose our laptop's primary hard drive as the install location, as you can see. It's then just a matter of hitting enter and letting the setup do its thing. It really doesn't take long at all. But that will depend on whether you are using an SSD like me or a traditional hard drive. Still, expect this to take a couple of minutes at most. Now once it says it's installed successfully, I'd then recommend choosing the reboot option. You can jump straight in, but personally I'd reboot first just to make sure it does so trouble free. 
Once it does so, you should see the Android splash screen, followed by a similar screen that you would on a new Android phone or tablet. It's then just the case of following the on-screen steps to finalise installation. You can add your Google account, back up from another device, etc. But I opted to set it up as a new device. Once you've followed these steps, just choose the home app and without further ado, your device should now be running Android. Very smoothly, I might add. This seems like a great option for any of you out there with a tired machine that doesn't run Windows so well anymore. But let's talk apps. First things first, you might want to go into settings followed by Android x86 options and enable native bridge. This stopped any app crashes I initially had. The whole experience is just like using an Android tablet with a keyboard and mouse. And you can still use a game controller too, should you want to play any controller supported titles. First of all, I opened up Chrome and headed for YouTube. Everything worked flawlessly and felt very snappy. I've got a mouse hooked up to this system just to make navigation a little easier. I'm assuming that a touchscreen device should also work properly with this and in that case it would be a far better experience when running the Android OS. I then went into the Play Store to download a couple of games just to see how well they'd run. I did find that a couple of them still crashed, but more often than not, I was able to install and play No Trouble. Of course, not everything will support a keyboard and mouse or a controller, and some games will just tell you that your system is not supported. This was never really about the gaming so much as it was trying to get an older machine running a little snappier, and in that regard, I think it was a success. Nonetheless, I tried Fallout Shelter, first of all, which, as expected, ran very nicely. I couldn't help but being slightly immature in the naming of my vault, of course, and as usual I got distracted by the game and forgot I was recording a video, so if this video is out on Wednesday and not Tuesday, this is the reason why. It's been a while since I've played this, but it's perfectly playable with a keyboard and mouse, so far at least. PUBG Mobile also started up and ran just fine. You can even adjust the settings here if you wish, but I left everything on default, which in this case happened to be medium. Performance-wise, it was fine and ran at what I'd estimate to be about 30 FPS. Using a keyboard and mouse, though, isn't quite right. You have to click the screen to drag the camera. I'm sure there is probably a simple option in the settings. I didn't look too much into it, but... If you did want to invest more time in getting games running, then I definitely recommend giving this a go. Even if you have no interest in gaming but you need a lightweight option for an ageing PC, then installing Android could be it. All relevant links of course will be down in the description below, and I definitely recommend trying this out for yourselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it, Android on your PC. So I'd like to thank ETA Prime, of course, for the inspiration behind this video. Um, after watching his videos on the subject, I just couldn't resist trying it on this older laptop. And I'm glad it worked out because I really wasn't quite sure what to do with this thing. I was going to replace the 800 series graphics card if it is replaceable. Um, but now I might just leave it as it is because it seems to be very snappy with the Android operating system installed. And perhaps look into fixing or replacing anything that needs replacing a little further down the line. So, should you do this? Well, if you have an aging or a failing machine, you might be surprised at how well Android can sort of breathe new life into it. You shouldn't really do this on your high spec everyday gaming machine because of course you will lose access to a wide variety of PC games, though you can still make use of the many titles available on the Play Store. Bear in mind some might not work. Call of Duty, mobile, didn't work, it fired up to the main menu and then crashed or froze, I should say. And Real Racing 3 from EA also didn't work. They were a couple more that I tried and unfortunately I couldn't get those to run. But maybe there are a couple of workarounds out there. I didn't spend too much time t trying to get the games to work because this was more about just general usage and speeding up a failing machine. But I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. I definitely recommend testing it out for yourselves. I don't know how well it will work on an even older system, perhaps a Pentium 4 and GeForce 210 rig, but if you have one of those, then by all means, give it a go because you might be pleasantly surprised. Anyway, it's a lovely day outside. Don't be tempted. Stay indoors, stay safe. 
hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. But before I go, I've no, I've, I've said everything. I've said everything. I think I was just trying to think, but it, it's gone. If I remember it, I'll put it in the comments down below. But thank you. I'm off to shave my head. I don't think I could get away with this. I can't pull this off, I don't think. It's not very appealing, not very attractive, is it? I look like a potato. <laughs> that probably looks just as bad. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, in the next one, we'll be taking a look at the RX 5500 XT, finally, a graphics card I've been meaning to look at for a few months now. And although it's not exactly the most timely review in the world, I hope you can join me then. So if you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all again very, very soon.